Hey. There you are. Are you okay? Better than that guy. Hi, welcome to CMVG's preview of Last of Us based on a uh, code we've just got. I'm with uh, Andy Kelly here. Hello, Andy. Hello. Uh, Andy, you've been playing it. Uh, the demo's pretty short, but it's really dense. There's lots in it. So, so talk us through your experience of playing the demo. Yeah, well, we were sent a new preview beta um, build. Uh, there's two levels in it. There's Lincoln and Pittsburgh. Um, and they are brief, but they did manage to squeeze a hell of a lot into these two little snippets of gameplay. Uh, that show off uh, all the stuff that this game offers and also how it differs from Uncharted because uh, it's by Naughty Dog and comparisons are inevitably going to spring up. Um, so, so I guess the quick, quick you know, the, the obvious question is how different is it to Uncharted? Yeah, well, when it was first announced, the general vibe was, oh, it looks like Uncharted with zombies. Um, but uh, to Naughty Dog's credit, it really isn't that at all. Um, there are some similarities to Uncharted, but really it feels like a different game. Um, so, starting with uh, the lead character, Joel, um, he is different to Nathan Drake in that Nathan Drake had this sort of. Uh, he could climb and cling to anything, and he could sprint really fast, and he could, you know, scurry between cover, and he felt like nimble and kind of athletic. Uh, in comparison, this guy is a lot heavier. He feels heavier, like the the controls mm. make him feel like you know he's he's less athletic. You can still climb up stuff, but it has a feeling of you being a real person as opposed to the superhuman, able to scale any cliff. Yeah. Nathan Drake. So that's a that's a big difference. You feel like you feel like a more uh, you feel more tethered to reality in the way you move through the world. How does it work with uh, his companion? Yeah, well, Ellie is always with you. Um, but in much the same way as Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite, she isn't uh, a pain. She doesn't get in the way. Mm. Uh, she, um, she's 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 always there and she's always behind you. But she will sort of she'll duck behind stuff. If you're in the middle of a firefight, she'll take sensible cover somewhere. Um, she will get attacked occasionally, but a big marker appears on the screen uh, on the HUD so that you know when you know to break away from whoever you're fighting and go and help her. Um, I didn't actually, I've played this through the demo like three times and she didn't actually die once. She was grabbed a few times, but um, so it seems that she's pretty resilient and she she kind of, she kicks at the at the bad guy's sort of shins and you know right, okay. keeps them busy while, while you work out how to help her. Okay, so leading up to those fights, it seemed like there was a very sort of uh, slow burn beginning to it. I mean, how, how does the game work? Does it, do, are you... Is the action right up front, or do you build into it? When when is the first action set piece? Give us an idea of, of how it sort of well, pans out. Well, based on this demo, the most surprising thing for me is that the pacing is really interesting, and that it's got this kind of interesting rhythm to it, where there'll be moments of intense action, but then it's also not afraid to just slow down a little bit and mm. let you explore. So in the, uh, the Lincoln level, you start uh, the level on the outskirts of the town and you're in this really beautiful forest. Uh, as you can see here, it's really lush and uh, there's that beautiful god rays. You know, god mm. rays are very big this year with Bioshock and that. Um, so it, it, it's really sort of serene. You can just hear like insects chirping and um, you're talking to Ellie and Ellie's talking about how she's never been in a forest before and it's, quite, it's a nice little sort of slow moment. Then you approach the town um, and then you suddenly you think that the way games have programmed your mind is that as soon as you get to the city, a hundred zombies are going to run at <laughs> yeah. you. But then what was really surprising is you're walking down the main street, this classic main street USA American small town mm. kind of image. Um, <clears throat> you're just left to explore, um, and there's the sort of there's this, this visual environmental storytelling, like the signs about evacuations and this kind of mossy overgrown cars and stuff like that. So. You, as you walk down the main street, you've been told a story, and there's a couple of buildings you can enter. Like there's an old music shop, uh, and Ellie will like leaf, uh, pick through the records and talk about how like it's sad that no one will ever hear this music again. And yeah, so th it's got a really nice sense of pacing. And I, Uncharted, I always found a little bit exhausting. There was a couple of slow moments, like the uh, exploring the village in Tibet, and Uncharted Two is a, a really nice little moment of calm. Yeah, uh, it seems that they're doing more of that stuff now. Um, so what about when combat 
it yeah. happens. I well, mean, what I, on the Lincoln level, I, I was walking through a sort of lot, like a back lot, and it was completely quiet. And I was like, right, well, you know, I I haven't met an enemy yet. I presume they'll be introduced in a cutscene or something. Mm. Um, and one just. Uh, I turned a corner and there's one just standing there, and it was what they call they're called clickers, right? And it's a, spe- a type of infected that's really far gone, and its head is just like a sort of big, m- massive like fungus, right? And they make this horrible like clicking sound, right? I'm not even going to try and do it, it's no. like, <laughs> or something like that. And they're really like it's a really eerie sound in there. I immediately pulled out my pistol, and I, I hadn't checked my inventory because I just started the level really, and I wasn't sure. I just immediately like emptied my gun and like I, I missed it like every time apart right. from one in the shoulder and I was like right I'll just reload I don't have any ammo and so I sort of I learned the hard way that this is a survival game right and so you're really limited on ammo um, then I realized that if you hit square um, whatever melee weapon you've got equipped you can batter over the head okay and and you know, I survived that encounter, but then f- from that point on, I was really careful with my ammo and making sure I was lining up for a headshot. And because uh, you know, I was in that again, I was in that uncharted mindset of oh, enemy, just you know, yeah, batter, hammer the fire button. And, and you talk, we were talking off air before recording this. You were saying that the the combat is really, to use a a phrase, visceral. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can feel every punch, every yeah. every strike. Well, the, the shooting. Isn't amazing. It feel it's got that kind of uncharted uh, uh, lightness to it. Like right. It doesn't really feel like you're you're firing a big heavy gun. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, it, it's not amazing. But um, the melee combat is superb. Like it's the melee combat in Uncharted was great, where you could uh, sort of drag guys over cover and and stuff. But it didn't. This is way better in that it feels super heavy. It feels really weighty. You feel like you're really connecting, and that's whether you're using your fists um, or you're using melee weapons. You find melee weapons lying around; they have a durability. Um, I think the one I found in in uh, the Lincoln level was a, a pipe with some scissors sellotaped to it. <laughs> right, so okay. it's really you can really feel it as you're like slamming that into yeah. the bad guy's necks. You know, it's like a really ramshackle weapon. But that's that's the game is about kind of. Improvising with what's lying around, around yeah, here. and that, that plays into the fact that dotted around the environment are these sort of bits and pieces that you can pick up, pick yeah. up and take to workbenches. Well, everywhere you everywhere you go in the world, uh, exploring buildings and and in these slow moments isn't just for the sake of atmosphere and storytelling. It's also has a gameplay purpose. Where there'll be junk lying everywhere, um, random bits of uh, you know just supplies and. Duct tape and yeah. you know stuff like that, and, and whenever you're near a, a bunch of it, you don't. If you just stand in place and press the pick up button, mm. he will automatically reach his arms out, so you don't have to, you know, strafe past shelves going pick up, pick up, pick <laughs> right, up, pick up. Okay. He'll just reach out for it. So that's okay. a really nice little, clever, intuitive touch in there. Yeah, because you're going to be spending a lot of the game just picking stuff up. Yeah, um, you can, you can craft at any time. You can take your backpack off, and it doesn't freeze time. So. If you think oh, I'm gonna, I'll just pause time and craft a medi pack mm. in the middle of this firefight. You can't because it's, it's not real time. Yeah. So he takes his backpack off, and you can make, you can upgrade your melee weapon, you can make medi kits, and other stuff. But then, if you find a workbench, you can use the parts to upgrade your guns, and it's the usual array of gun upgrades. You know, extended clip and all yeah. that sort of thing. Um, I didn't see anything really interesting, but it's good that it's got that uh, kind of persistence that RPG persistence in the background so you said uh, we, when we were prepping this you talked about how there's a really sort of nice balance between action and stealth you said that the way this is the guys in in our video team played out what you're seeing on your screen at the moment was very different to what you played when you or it played out very differently yeah. so we, there's a good degree of freedom there yeah you, you're given an element of choice and this is only based on the set piece in the Pittsburgh level which is the second level in this demo where um, you're trapped in a storefront and there's like maybe a dozen uh, hunters who are like human survivors who mm. have gone a bit mental. Have gone mental, yeah. yeah. And so you, you, how you, they start firing at you, but you can choose to approach the situation. You can fight them directly with your guns, but with the limited ammo, that's probably not going to be a long-term solution. Uh, you can sneak past them 
I, I wasn't actually able to manage to manage to sneak past them, but one of the hints on the loading screen said, some encounters you can just sneak past the enemies right, and not okay. fight them at all. Um, but if, then you can do a stealthy one where if you crouch, there's a sort of listening mode right. where it will highlight enemies through walls. And, and that's supposed to be a, uh, symbolize you hearing them. Um, it's not quite as uh, good as Batman's yeah. visor yeah, yeah. in the Arkham game, so it's not like a, it doesn't feel cheaty. No, um, you only you only see them if you're close to them, and that gives you a chance to wait for them to separate and then stealthily take them out. Yeah, um, you can like slam their head against walls and and you know take them out. Uh, the game the game looks beautiful as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the sort of the world building in it is really incredible um, it feels it doesn't feel open world but it doesn't feel really tightly linear either mm. um, the main street on in Lincoln there's some little side paths right and there's like an optional bit where you, you see like a you see a door being pounded mm. and you approach the door and then the pounding stops and then you open the door and Ali's like are you really going to go in there and then you, you you go in and it's totally pitch black so you go from like the sunny outdoors to this really bleak, dark in interior, and you can click on your flashlight with the uh, right stick, and you'll be creeping through this house, and you'll be going up the stairs, and and actually I'm not going to spoil what happens because it's, yeah. but it's just an example of a little pocket of story, and inside the buildings you'll find notes lying around, and uh, what's cool is you know usually when you find notes in games it's just like a handwriting font. Yeah. On a on a on a bit of like a texture yeah. of lined paper, all the notes in this are handwritten right. on different little scraps of paper and stuff. So oh, and you right, can zoom okay. in and spin them around. So it has that. It feels like someone has really like scribbled a note and left it there instead of just like, yeah, you know, a, cut a and paste it. Yeah, yeah. So it's little. Every inch of the game feels like handcrafted like that. Mm. You don't feel like assets are being reused. It feels like someone has has painstakingly drawn this world. You know. Yeah. And that really brings the richness to it. And, okay, so yeah. overall, you bit you, your, your sort of impressions of the twenty minutes you played so far sound like you're extremely impressed. What, with yeah, what you're yeah, no, I, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to playing the full game. Um, there was the the combat is fine. That I was, I was, I wasn't underwhelmed by it, but I was least impressed by the gun combat just because it felt more familiar. Um, but having the option to avoid that is, is good. There was there was some interesting gameplay. Uh, mix up where it was uh, you were like sort of disarming traps left by someone uh, and it just broke up the pacing a little bit um, the 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 worst the worst bit I say that loosely because you know it's you know it's a really good game but um, there's a bit where you you act you trigger a trap and you get strung up by your legs and you're upside down and uh, Ellie's trying to free you and you've got uh, infected running at you in droves and you've got a protect her right um, but what was kind of weird about it is that we're, throughout the whole level I was really scavenging ammo and being really tight with ammo but then suddenly when you're in the set piece you've got a magic infinite gun right and it's an, it, it's never explained it's just like it, I know why they did that because from, from a gameplay perspective if you had only one bullet left and you, you were in that set piece you couldn't do it mm. but for the sake of having a moment of drama the yeah. I'll just have an infinite gun and that, that pulled me out of it yeah. I was so absorbed in it walking down Main Street and then the first level and, and taking in all the environmental storytelling and listening to Ellie and stuff I was so into it and then when that happened I felt like oh I'm playing a game again you know mm. it really yanked me out of it so that was the only moment that I thought was a little bit it, they, they were probably thinking we need to get an exciting moment in here mm. and you know and, and and if and there's also an instant fail state in that where if one of the clickers grabs you when you're hung upside down, you die and you have to restart. Them. So it felt like a little bit clumsy. Um, but otherwise, the, the the crafting, the pacing, the storytelling, the absolutely stunning visuals, and Ellie as well was really likable. What was good about Ellie is that she's not um, the kind of damsel in distress. She's no. not she's not a liability. She's, and she sounds exactly like Ellen Page, right? And I, I remember they had to change her. She doesn't face. look too dissimilar to yeah. her either. Well, they changed. She looked a hell of a lot more like her. Yeah. They changed her face, and they've obviously based her on that type of Ellen, like Ellen Page in Juno, like slightly, uh, sort of biting mm. wit, and you know she's not like a sort of, 
she's not like Ashley in Resident Evil 4 you mm. know she's uh, she's actually quite entertaining and, and the dialogue's really well written and the guy who plays Joel has got a really good delivery style where he doesn't sound like gun ho yeah action action jerk yeah. he's like quite likeable and he's got a sort of grizzled he's a bit like um, you know No Country for Old Men Josh Brolin's character yeah. he's, he's got that kind of weariness about him mm. so yeah I, I, I'm really impressed by this and um, absolutely can't wait for the review code to come in. 